Before we get into the chair's report, um, we've had a NASB annual conference. We've had board members Bolter, uh, Cannon, and board member Lisa come and go to that. So I'm going to turn the time briefly over to to you to um, speak to that experience or report on that. Um, and we'll start with uh, board member Bolter. Okay. So, um, what is that? <laughs> oh, right? No? Oh, no, I, there was just like some noise. Um, was that my phone? Was it my ears? Doing? I have no idea. There was my phone. I, I try, it's on silent. <laughs> but I, have, it sounded I, but like I have my device. It's cranked clear to the oh. max. So, sorry. It was, it was, it was, is that what it was? Okay. <laughs> right. So, um, what background music? I think the first thing that actually needs to be acknowledged is probably pretty exciting. Um, and really, the most important thing is that Janet won her election. So, she is on the NASB board. And I think that pretty much is the whole thing. No. <laughs> um, so, anyway, it was, it was a good conference. Um, I was really disappointed with the GAC committee that. There were only like seven of us that were there, which is really sad because it's taxpayer money that goes to pay for this. And um, do you want what, me to say what GAC yeah, is? Yeah, what's the act? Um, Government and Action Committee. Government Action Committee. And um, and I, I know that I've voted not to be in NASB, but because it has passed, then I don't feel good about like using taxpayer money to pay for these fees if we're not utilizing NASB. So I'm glad that we're at least utilizing it and that Utah was represented in, <laughs> in that meeting, but there were only seven of us. So that's, that was kind of um, disappointing. Um, the, the thing that stood out to me at the conference was um, we had the National Teacher of the Year um, speak and her name was Mandy Mandy Manning and she was from the state of Washington and she talked about um, having two refugee students who were uh, legally deaf and they had no language skills and because the parents didn't understand the system they really couldn't advocate for the children and so she was their only advocate but she had so many hoops to jump it was um, it was kind of it was kind of sad that it took so long to get these kids the help that they needed and the devices that they needed. And so I just wanted, um, I'm not sure what kind of hoops we have here in the state of Utah, but after hearing that story and knowing that we've had some refugees um, come, I just feel like maybe we should look at um, our systems and, you know, do we have the ability to help these students that have um, disabilities like that uh, without having a teacher jump so many hoops and taking months and months and months. And so I guess one of the questions proposed in the panel was that our systems prepared to address the vulnerability of children. And, um, and that really stood out to me and I just thought, what are we doing in Utah? And then it, I also had a great appreciation for the Utah School for the Deaf and Blind because I know that they do a lot and so um, and I kind of wish that other states had something as great as what we do. Um, so anyway, that was, that was the main thing that kind of stood out to me. And the, the other thing that they talked about was um, having some of the refugee um, parents, because they don't know our system, perhaps attend with their, th with their child at the school so that they can see what it's like. And then that would also give an opportunity for us to talk about um, education for them um, and continuing adult education. And I thought that was probably a good idea. I don't know, maybe that's something that we could look at if it's not being done, since we do have a state that there were refugees. So anyway. Jim, does anyone have any questions? I just have a comment. Uh, and, and maybe that's something for our own training to know exactly what we have in place. Um, on the state level and and maybe touch base on some of the things that happen on a lo local level. I think there's something really 
worthwhile to for our awareness and, and the public. Yeah. So thank you for bringing that forward and uh, and uh, representing us at the conference. Um, thank you, uh, Board Member Cannon. Did you want to add? I appreciate your email and that, but I've got a I've got a you've got to push your button and then I'll. There we go, thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity that we had to go. We had, I had a lot of fun being with Michelle and Lisa, our little Utah cadre, and uh, I think we learned some new things and gained some valuable information. Um, one of the things I learned is that uh, this is something new is that NASB has two sister organizations. One is called NICSB, which is State Board of Education Secretaries, and the other is called NICOSIA, which is State Board of Education Attorneys. And these are partner uh, entities of NASB, and they now have made the president of each of those organizations a member of the NASB Board of Directors. And these folks can attend the professional development sessions uh, that they have for state board attorneys and the ones that they have for state board secretaries and get give networking and professional development opportunities to those sort of unique positions. And uh, there's no additional fee for the secretaries to attend. I think there's like a $100 fee for state board attorneys. $130. Yeah, we, we snuck in on some of those discussions and thought they were real good. Carol used to go to those. <laughs> I, I think that they were the finest attorneys I've ever, almost ever known. They were just great. Well, they had some, some great topics, and, and so we kind of snuck in to hear some of those as well. So thank you for the opportunity. Okay, any questions for Board Member Cannon? Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Board Member Lisa Cummins, did you want to? Way in to any highlights? Uh, for me, um, it, it was really interesting. It, um, a lot to learn. We, I'm trying to find the gentleman's name here. I took lots of pictures. Um, I should have put a slideshow together, like like Superintendent Dixon. Um, but uh, Michael Fullen came and spoke with us, and uh, he's. Um, world-renowned for his um, deep learning uh, with, uh, I think he's introducing the six C's, letter C's, um, character and civic and, um, let's see, there was uh, critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration. I think we're already doing that here in the state of Utah. Um, one thing that I also learned w when we talked about um, higher ed and secondary schools and, and how to help their students, there was a lot of commentary um, about how to steer students towards um, graduating. And Kentucky, a representative from Kentucky, stated that his state um, was just allowing students to graduate if they had um, a college path or a career path, and in my head I thought, oh, they were so limiting those those kids, and so I, I was grateful that you know Utah has has its own path of of you know with the especially with the um, a portrait of a graduate, what does that look like, and expanding on that, and not just putting them in a box that nobody can move in. So. Um, I was grateful for that. Yes, we did uh, sneak off to other classes. We found their topics um, a little bit more um, engaging, if you will. Um, and uh, and then afterwards, uh, Janet and I went to go went to, to see Rembrandt in person after the, after the meetings were over. So that was a little treat. But uh, thank you for allowing us to go. Okay. Um, thank you for representing us. It's it's, I'm, I'm sure on on the national side of things that that they appreciate the group that went out from from Utah and it's it's hard to as, as you go and you you come back with little nuggets of knowledge and all of that but at the same time people are learning from you and you'll never know what 
what it is until you circle back somehow and and um, and meet with those people. That's been my experience on on serving on committees. And I'm sure that the the people benefited from uh, Utah folks being there. So thank you for that sacrifice and willing to go. Uh, any questions for these folks? Okay, I'll, I'll get into my report. Um, uh, first of all, I want to recognize and thank uh, um, Vice Chair Brittany Cummings. I, I had a couple rough weeks uh, in the workplace, losing one of my shareholders at age 38 and dealing with uh, their family and clients and, and that. And, and so thank you, Brittany, for filling in and hitting those assignments and, and staff for doing that. Um, taking care of that. I want to thank you guys for the good work you're doing. You're serving on many committees. You're everywhere and you're around and you're being noticed and um, being recognized. So I appreciate your service on that. It, it's a lot of work. And, um, but it is appreciated out in our community. We're gearing up for a few things with the, the legislature and there, of course these interim meetings are are starting up and people are posturing and positioning but um, as we reflect back on this past year we have December's our next board meeting and you know there'll be quite a bit of heavy lifting happening but a, a lot of good betterments have come from this board this year and they're being recognized by the education community and parents and and then it's you know not, not everything's perfect but we try to do things just a, a little better every opportunity we have up to, to to bat. And within our committees and within our organization, there's something really important. And I think baseball brings this out, and that's designated hitters. And so many of us cover for each other, whether we have an assignment or not, or out for a rescue. And and you guys, you guys do it. My ears are still ringing. I have this on. <laughs> Quiet. Can you hear it? Does it jump out here? Oh. Um, good. And so you guys are really good designated hitters so, for each other, so thank you um, for that. As we have been preparing, preparing for budgets and that, school year's up and started, and we're, what are we, month of, of uh, November. The staff here, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing a lot of of rumblings, you know, education's happening. Um, there's really good reports coming out. We just keep getting little bits now and again of the accomplishments from our state, and I, I think we need to do a little better job uh, in prioritizing those little victories that happen, because I think our public um, needs, needs to know about them. So as you see them and that, and this is a good time in this meeting when you have an opportunity um, on board member comments. If, if they're not brought out by the superintendent or something else, please bring those, bring those forward. So uh, we're aware of it, and the public is also. So thank you for what you do. Um, you guys have any questions for me? Not seeing any, we'll